Good morning, boomers. The voice of the blockchain, Satoshi's big cousin, crypto's finest. Champagne, shout out to Athlete over there on DLive. Today we're talking about Chainlink has entered the top five. It's booming, it keeps moving. Uh, we'll be talking about BTC, gold, silver, and more uh, as this thing keeps shaking, guys. Good morning to Athlete. Good morning to everybody tuning in. Make sure you're touching the buttons for me, guys. Like, subscribe, post notification. Boom, boom, boom. Good morning, Derek Smith. Everybody else tuning in, I'm just warming up the broadcast right here to 11,000 and beyond. It seems like 11,000 may be the new support level. It's a little early to call, uh, being that Bitcoin has never been above $10,000 for more than 60 days. So, you know, we're still in the middle of this run, but it's looking really good. I think that we may have conquered 10,000 and once and for all. But again, it's a little early to call. We'll be checking out the headlines and the charts. Uh, I want to look at Chainlink. This thing keeps going up. Has anybody used Chainlink though? Has anybody actually used it? Now I know what it is. It's the Oracle or whatnot. And it has the partnership or I've heard it has a partnership with Google. It's moving. Uh, tremendous community, tremendous memes. The Link Marines are out there on the field. But have you actually seen anybody use the dashboard or actually seen the coin function or the the platform function because I haven't. I would love to see it because, I mean, it's already a top fiver. I, I might as well, right? Uh, I remember when we got into Chainlink, only 30 cents. And then we jumped off the, the link train around $3 uh, thinking that we made substantial gains. I mean, if we, we rode the train from 30 cents to $3, that was about a, a 10x. So, you know, think about it, guys. You know, I never thought it would have gone to a $16. Imagine we would have rode that train the whole way. Imagine we would have thrown all the bags. It's also, you know, the coulda, woulda, shoulda story that so many of us seem to experience. Like, you know, you sell and things go up and then you kick yourself in the behind. Uh, but guys, don't be that guy. Okay, don't be that guy. Because the bottom line here is if you're making gains and you're still in the green, then you're doing the right moves. You're never going to be able to get everything, okay? You're not going to be able to get every gain and everything. So the strategy here is green, green, green. If it's, if it's a little green here and a little green there, just keep going green, keep going green, and uh, keep making those gains is my personal opinion. I-M-O, in my opinion, is the whole channel. I'm not your crypto godfather. Although maybe I should be. It's above the alt bitcoins. Shout out to Crystal Zilla. Shout out to Derek Smith. Shout out to Athlete. Everybody else tuning in. Let me turn off these coins and these dollars. Share my screen and uh, we'll run down the prices. Actually, let me find Trading View uh, real quick so I can see the uh, the Bitcoin charts here. Bitcoin cooling off, but a nice support. A nice support right now with Bitcoin above, clearly above 11,000. And um, I'm feeling good about that. Let me, let me pull up these charts for you guys. This thing is loading up. Give me a quick second here. You see BTC on Coinbase against the US dollar. This is the one month chart. Uh, we have, we're have we clearly in the midst of a bull run. Uh, and you could see uh, all trajectories are pointing all the way up. Uh, we're seeing a little pullback after the highs of close to 12,000. But, uh, you know, look at the chart. It's looking good. Let's look at the, the five day, actually. The five day is a little bit more unclear the trajectory on the five day we're kind of you know trying to find ourselves here in the five day chart but when you pull out to the one month it's obvious that the trend is uh going up let's see what the technicals are reading for bitcoin today and then we'll also cha check chain link of course bye 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 everything is there's no there's zero technicals that are reading sell with exception of uh actually there's some oscillators but the majority of all the technicals, whether it be for a one day or a one week or even one month projections, they are reading buy, buy, strong buy. And um, I would somewhat agree. Again, you know, no one really knows, but uh, it's definitely looking good. Let me go ahead and, and uh, let me pull up Link, actually. Making gains with Link. How about the stinky linkers? There's Link against BTC up another 6% all the way up. Look at this. Uh, it's and it's important for me to check out Link against BTC because, you know, if you're a crypto boomer, who wants to stack USD? I mean, I'll take the USD and we're comparing everything to USD, but it seems to me like the store of value here is BTC. 
And I'm reminded of uh, that company, I forgot the name of it, that they just bought 21,000 Bitcoins because they'd rather sit on Bitcoin than cash. So, you know, they seem to be comparing their bag to BTC instead of USD. So you can see Link here clearly on, on the way up. And um, they don't have any technicals for Link, actually. Let me. That's on BitBay. Yeah, there's the technicals for Link. And they're super strong buy. Look at this. Strong, strong, strong. I must say that the expectations have been exceeded when it comes to Link. I mean, I'm pretty much blown out the water. I, I still haven't seen anybody use it. And I, listen, I'm not saying it's not legit. It's obviously legit. I mean, it's on most of the major exchanges. It's cracked through. Uh, now top five coin. But have you seen anyone use it? That's that's the, the question I keep asking. And I, I haven't. I, have, I mean, I've seen people trade it. A lot of people hold it. I would love to see how it works. I would love to see how it works. So let me know. If, give me a heads up if you've actually used Chainlink. It's kind of, I'm kind of perplexed here. I haven't even found one person using it. So it's, you know, it, it makes you question all coins, especially when you haven't seen anybody using Chainlink and when Bitcoin Satoshi Vision is still a top 10 coin. Okay. Uh, it just makes you question. You're like, hold up here. That's why I, I, I remain in the position that BTC and Ether are the only blue chip coins here. I think the thing that I think the thing that made Link hard to understand is because it's more about background thing. Like we go send a wire to someone, they use a network to make sure it gets to the bank. Yeah, I mean th that does make sense, Crystalzilla. Absolutely, it's it's more of a bank a background thing. It's an oracle providing information between blockchains or whatnot. But I I would you know I, after being in the space and seeing it move every single day, I would at least like to see a screenshot of of the dashboard. Or like I want to see it move. I don't. I don't have to understand all the bells and whistles. I don't need to be a programmer. But you know, I don't understand everything about Bitcoin programming wise. But people see it work, and you can you know you can actually use it. That's basically uh, uh, Crystalzilla is, is linking us to Gemini. Um, what is Chainlink, and how does it work? Of course, we. I mean, I could read about it, and I've, I've certainly read about it. I just want to see someone ride the bike. I don't want to hear about a, a person riding the bike. I want to actually see someone ride the bike. And I want to be able to jump on the bike myself, even though if I don't need, if I can't ride it, I want to be able to know where I can go to sit on the saddle. You know what I mean? But you would, you know, you would think that uh, I could go somewhere and see it work. That's all. You know, let me just see it. I don't even need to understand the, uh, the, the, the all the ins and outs. I just want to see it. Kaboom to Jigger Roams. Um, Crystalzilla and the rest of the boomers. Crystalzilla is linking us to Gemini. And you can check that out there in the population of the YouTube chat box. And uh, I want to just see a video of it actually working. I still haven't even came across that. Let, let's go ahead and run down. Uh, well, let's run down the prices. They're right here in front of us. BTC at 11,005. Ether at 392. Uh, Chainlink is the darling of altcoins for the past couple of years. Uh, it's, it's really been, you know, Chainlink and Binance for these past couple of years have been the two bigger dogs that have outperformed Bitcoin. You know, the bigger, bigger dogs altcoin wise. We got a uh, Bitcoin cash there at 282 Satoshi vision. We skip Cardano at 13 cents, Litecoin at 54 Tezos at 423 Binance at 21.21 crypto.com at 15 cents eos 303 eos slipping in the rankings though uh you know even on the eth trader reddit and some of the eth reddits uh there's some memes that are poking and making fun of so-called eth killers and they're not even mentioning eos anymore they're only mentioning tezos and uh What's the other one? I don't know, Cardano or, or the other one. But they didn't mention EOS, which was funny. I was like, not even the memes are, are mentioning EOS as a competitor to Ether anymore, which is something to take note of. So, and things keep slipping on the rankings. And I'm glad that I rolled over most of my EOS gains into... Well, there, were, there wasn't that many gains on EOS. Just the most of the value I rolled over to, EOS, uh, to, to Ether, excuse me, from EOS to Ether. 
Wow, chain link won't stop. I keep waiting for a dip to get a few more, but it won't stop. Yeah, it won't stop. This thing is out of, you know, yesterday it was up. It was like $15 and I was like, yeah, I mean, you know, it's up, but I wouldn't take a stab at this and boom, it keeps going. It keeps going. So, you know, it's, it, it appears to be the gift that keeps giving right now. So shout out to everybody riding that train. And uh, unfortunately, I'm not holding any bags as of late. Uh, we were able to make some gains on our community portfolio months ago, almost a year ago. Jigger Rome says he's got the link staked at 8% for three months on the CRO app. Keeps me from selling. There you go. All right. And Crystal Zilla says, yeah, that's another reason people are staking link. So what are the rewards for staking link? Do you get rewarded in link or in ETH or how does that work? Okay, well, he just answered that. 6% in link and 2% in CR uh, R coin APR. Okay, thanks for answering. I, I, I'm asking the question and you already answered it. I just didn't, I didn't see it. Thanks, Jigger Roms. Now, is staking link inherit to the coin or is it something that exchanges are offering aside? Like, for instance, you, you know, you could save Bitcoin on, on Binance and receive like a 1%, 1% APR or something like that. It's not that you're staking Bitcoin, okay? It, you know, the, the exchange is providing the return. You, you, you can't stake Bitcoin. You know, you could, you know, you could receive rewards through a, an exchange or whatnot, but it's not inherent to the system. So I'm asking the question is, is Link des designed th with a staking system or is it just the exchanges that are offering a return if you lock up your coins? That's usually to provide liquidity. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. I'm, I'm assuming that it doesn't and that it's the exchanges that are offering it, which is all good. I mean. And that being said, it's, you could you could uh, save and stake some coins like on Binance just by leaving them there. Um, a, an example would be Kyber Network. I know K Kyber Network is a, a coin that allows you to stake and receive Ether rewards. Um, and you could do that on your own or you can leave it there um, right on Binance and they'll do the staking for you. Jigarome says exchange is providing the return. There you go. Okay. Yeah. With some instances and in many of these instances, it's the exchange that's providing the return. And in other instances, it's the actual uh, blockchain algorithm that is providing the returns. Like new coins are being minted. Um, in the case of many of those, like Cardano setting up the Ouroboros and uh, there's going to be proof of stake and those the coins will be produced by the stakers. That's how it, it, you know, they're, they're created. But all that being said, I still haven't seen Link work. I mean, like I, I and again, I'm not I'm not saying I'm questioning it, right? I, I'm, I'm not being like skeptical. Oh, yeah, I guess I'm being a bit skeptical. It's just like, wow, how could this thing be a top five coin? And I've never even seen anybody use it. I mean, I hear about it all the time. I like it. It's on all the major exchanges. I'm not saying it's, uh, you know, it's nefarious or anything. I'm just I'm asking myself, like, wow, how could this be so high and no one uses it? Or at least that I haven't seen, you know, and, and, you know, Crystal Zilla makes a point, you know, it's more of a background thing. It's probably more used by, uh, you know, the programming and, and, and the, the technical folk. But uh, at this point, being in the crypto space every single day, I think I would have came across at least a screenshot or somebody talking about actually using it, which is uh, interesting. I'm scared to have my coins on an exchange. Yeah, and with reason, Casey, with re with reason. And we've always said this. Listen, uh, you know, the crypto way is if it's not, if you don't own the keys to your coins, then somebody else does and they're actually not your coins. They're, they're being held by someone else. Just like you don't have the keys to the vault in the bank. That money's not really yours. They owe it, you know, they, they, it's an IOU. And if they want, they can open up the vault. If not, maybe they run out of cash. At the end of the day, you don't have it in your hands. You're letting another man handle your bags. And that is the idea with crypto, giving more power back to the people and allowing the, uh, pr the layman to be their own central bank. You have the combination to the safe, okay? Uh, so that's what, you know, one of the, the value propositions with crypto. Now, that being said, when you leave it in an exchange and you put you let someone else custody your crypto, you're kind of negating the whole value proposition of crypto. And furthermore, uh, once you understand that, then you it's a little bit easier to navigate and, and uh, accept some risk. Like, for instance, I understand all that. That being said, I'm comfortable with 
leaving a little bit on Binance. You know, I'll front a little bit to Binance. I understand how much I can let them hold. Okay, but I, you know, I won't let them hold the whole vault. You understand what I'm saying? So it's a it's a level of uh, what type of risk are you willing to assume? But uh, let's be clear. And it's, and it's different. Even with the banks, uh, you know, you, you run the risk because they have the keys. But at least with banks, they're insured, FDIC insured. When it comes to crypto, these crypto exchanges are not insured by anything. So if there's a hack or anything happens, uh, you may be out of luck. Now, when it comes to Binance, uh, I'm a little less apprehensive of holding coins on their exchanges because in the past, most recently, they were hacked for I don't know how many millions of dollars worth of Bitcoin. And uh, they assumed responsibility and they paid for it out of their own pocket. So, you know, it, it showed me a little bit of, le- of some level of integrity. But, uh, yeah, let that be known out there, guys. Make sure that, you know, you have the coins in your wallet. And that's the point of crypto. So that you once you it, once you have the coins in your wallet, that key is the combination. You don't need a hardware wallet. You don't need a, a specific application. All you need is to lock it up with those private keys. You could put that number, that combination on, on, on a piece of paper. You can etch it on stone. Uh, you know, all that the hardware devices are doing is generating that private key offline and storing it there in that device. But it's also uh, a signal or everybody else letting them know where your address is being s- safely kept. So, I mean, you know, it's kind of like saying, you know what, my keys are right here. So... You know, I, I have mixed feelings about hardware devices. Shout out to KC, Jerry Rome's Crystal Zilla, and the rest of the pumpers on. We've been on for about only 17 minutes. I'll take some comments and questions. We still got to run down the uh, headlines. We got to check out gold, silver, uh, check out the, the deals and steals. Uh, and whatnot. Let me see uh, D Live real quick. We got five minutes. I'll take some D-Live comments and questions. We still got to run down uh, headlines. We got to check out gold, silver. Let me uh, mute myself there. Crystal Zilla donated an ice cream. So did Athlete. Thank you so much. I'm going to throw 50 there in the box. And you know what? While we're at it, we may just uh, distribute rewards, being that we have fifth, uh, five people here already. We may get it on and popping. Let me just throw a little a couple of sticker memes over here. You know, let me throw an Epstein, a Corona Lisa, a How Dare You, um, and more. Let me trigger trigger a couple normies. Athlete, that's a good one with the <laughs> Make America Great. This this one's good. That one's good. Kaboom. All right, let's let's get this going. We've got six people here. Let's go ahead and distribute these rewards. When I click click re- uh, when I distribute the rewards, you'll get a pop-up on your end that says click claim rewards. You have to click on that. If you're not getting the pop-up, it's probably because your browser has pop-ups blocked. So let's go ahead and do it. Click claim rewards, 30 seconds. Let's go. Athlete is the big winner. 51 lemons for Athlete. Shout out to Athlete. He's been showing up early. I appreciate your participation. And kaboom. Congrats. Coinbase giving loans 20%, 8%. Who would do that? Um, could you clarify that? What do you mean? That they're they're charging 20% for the loan? Or are they... I'm kind of confused. Shout out to Level Up. Good morning. Let's look at what Wall Street Journal has to say. Jobless claims are down. And uh, I don't believe anything about these claims or this data. It's all fake news. But hey, when it hits the headlines, people react like it's real. So uh, that may be a reason why the stocks keep going. 
NASDAQ rises as tech shares gain. S&P 500 drifts lower and after touching records. I'll give you guys an update on uh, my credit spreads. I closed them out. Uh, I closed out the eBay yesterday and I closed out the NVIDIA this morning, at both at a profit. I had opened up those spreads last week. I told you my strike prices. I believe it was um, $53 for eBay and $425 for uh, NVIDIA. I was clearly in the money. And um, I could wait till tomorrow and e- extract the rest of my gains and and then get my my collateral back. But listen, if I'm I'm already sowing the money, you know, all I had to do was buy back. Uh, I bought back eBay for five bucks, so I got a I got a fifteen dollar credit for a hundred dollar collateral, uh, and I could have waited till tomorrow for it to expire. But I just bought it back today for five bucks, so I ended up with the difference ten dollars for every uh, hundred bucks. It's nice, a ten percenter. So I got a few of those contracts and I just cl- closed out the NVIDIA. They gave me 40 cents for every 250 I put up and uh, I closed that uh, for three cents. So I ended up with the difference at 37. So uh, that's that's what's going on. $100,000 in Bitcoin, they're going to give you 20,000. What kind of crackhead would go for that? I'm still not understanding. So you, if you want to take I'm, I'm still, um, I got to look on, it's been on, I don't even know that Coinbase is actually offering loans and doing DeFi now. I know they have like a wallet that hooks up with the ether or whatnot, but I have no idea. Bro, did you see the CEO putting all his cash reserves into Bitcoin? I don't know if it was the CEO, but I know like some company, and we just talked about it right now, that had 21, they bought 21,000, uh, 21,000 Bitcoins, uh, because they want to hold Bitcoin instead of cash, which, you know, it's what we've been doing. <laughs> it's what we've been doing. It sounds like he's been listening to the champ. Reminds me of an uh, old EOS pump. No one even knew what it was for. I still have no clue what Link does that requires blockchain. Uh, I, I know it's a, it's an oracle. So like you know for for what is what it's doing, it's it's providing it you know like different information, like uh, specifically prices. So like these DeFi platforms, uh, their their what their loan rates and. Um, their maker and taker rates are based on the price of the coins and where they're getting their prices from an, an Oracle, from a system in real time. And I believe that Chainlink is providing the real time data to these different platforms. Now, all that being said, I still haven't seen anybody actually use it. Like I know the idea roughly. OK, I'm sure I'm not explaining it correctly. I mean, I get the idea, but uh, there you go. Link, it has electrolytes. <laughs> telling people price is worth billions. Uh, well, it's not. they're not telling people price are worth billions. People are paying billions for it. You know? you know, at the end of the day, the price that's reflected online is the difference between the bid and the ask. That's what it is. It's not what, you know, it's not someone telling anybody. What's, what it is is you're seeing the difference between the bid and the ask. There's people asking and there's people bidding. Why should we trust Chainlink's Oracle, says Ronnie? Um, I don't know, Ronnie. Uh, I would assume that it's, you know, uh, that, that it's it's verifiable and, you know, it's it's all math and it's open source and just like Bitcoin is. But I, I'm not a programmer, so I can't look behind the hood or under the hood. I heard Chainlink will be how Ripple will work with different countries. Who knows? I, I haven't heard that. Yeah, Chainlink is using data feeds from exchanges. Yeah, like that's basically what I'm saying. So like the the data feeds, the prices and the different data. So a lot of these smart contracts, the the rules for locking or unlocking or the way they behave is based on on real-time data, whether it be price or something else. Who's feeding that information to these smart contracts? Uh, And that would be an Oracle like Chainlink. I understand the concept. I just still haven't seen, like, have you seen the actual like dashboard? Like, how do you, how do you get it running? And that's the question I'm asking. Mexico's booming crypto market. I was checking out this one. I'm not going to read this article, but you may want to check it out. So you, uh, Coinbase is now offering Bitcoin back loans to U.S. customers. I, I think that's kind of what uh, Lady Plants was referring to.
Ronnie says from centralized exchanges. I, I, I think it's a, a combination of, uh, of a majority of exchange. I don't know which exchanges. Maybe you could pick or choose. I'm not, I'm not the guy to ask about the functionality, exactly how uh, Chainlink work. I understand the idea. I know where to get it and everything, but actually that's what I'm asking. I'm asking, have anybody seen it used? Like I, I'm asking similar questions, but I don't think it's only from centralized exchanges. Like uh, for instance, coin market cap is getting uh, information from centralized and decentralized exchanges. Yeah, there, there's also feeds from Uniswap. So yeah, I, there, there, there's um, feeds from decentralized exchanges, I would assume. There you go, Chainlink is booming. And it's funny, like, that we're asking these questions. I had uh, some Link Marine show up via DLive the other day. And I was asking these questions. They're like, champ, we need you back on the link team. And listen, I don't have anything against link. I actually like that. We've made a flip and we made gains. Boom, boom, boom. And they were like, you know, and I asked him these questions. I'm like, you know, this was, it was like $10 around that time. I was like, you know, it's kind of high. I don't know. I've never seen anybody use it. Do you know what it does? And these people literally told me, I don't know what it does. I don't care. It's just making gains. <laughs> so, you know, that, that's the... <laughs> That's what a, a lot of people say, you know, like, I don't care. It's just making gains. And that, that's a red flag to me, you know, um, by at all time, I don't ask questions basically is what they were saying par, uh, Ronnie says, so pooling data from multiple oracles, I, I, I wouldn't call them oracles. So the, the oracles, what pools the data. So yeah, you're, you're basically, they're the oracle. They don't pull the uh, oracle. Uh, they don't pull the data from oracles. The fact that they're pulling pulling the data, that makes them the oracle. In this example, so Chainlink pulls all the the data from all these places, and then the smart contract connects connects to one uh, source, Chainlink, that has them all. And again, like, you know, how could you trust it? How you not, Ronnie, I, you know, I, I can't, I have, I'm not the programmer, so I haven't been able to look under the hood and uh, answer those questions. Look at the one day chart here for Chainlink, looking good. Let me check out Wall Street Journal. We just checked that one out. Yahoo Finance. Coin T. How about comp, comp BTC, comp went up 50% yesterday. Actually, let me tell you about a move I did. Actually, a little, a little move I did. So, you know, I, I, you know, I got the DeFi portfolio. I've been showing you that, uh, the virtual one. I also have a, a DeFi portfolio, personal one, uh, very, very similar to the one we have. And uh, yesterday, comp was up 50% in, in one day. It was like 52%. I was like, wow, this is tremendous gains. So I said, you know what? Let me pull it a little top, uh, off the top of... of uh, comp so i sold half my comp bag it went up 50 percent. so i sold half my bag and i i rolled it over and actually i want to see where it's how it's doing today and so this is a wild play and again this is speculation guys uh, i'm not saying for anybody to do this because you'd probably be get, get clapped up i'm just saying what i did i rolled over and i picked up some uh, some yearn which is a uh, yfi i believe yfi it was it was the biggest loser yesterday and then comp was the biggest gainer and i noticed that yearn has been moving up there it is it's still losing today uh yearn has been move uh is been moving up in the DeFi rankings and i was like you know what let me let me give this one a little a little a little whirl here they're on binance so I, you know i threw a little stab at it what's up with coinbase today Oh, excuse me, coin market cap is running slow today. I've been getting errors from there, from them or whatnot. But anyway, let me bring this uh, YFI back. I'm having a little sl running slow here on, on coin market cap. But yeah, that's what I did. YFI, you're in finance. And they're still down. So, I mean, I got in yesterday 
I don't remember the price. But one thing that attracted to me about this is the low circulating. Look at the circulating supply on Yearn. 29,000 coins. And um, this, so what exactly is Yearn? I think it's there. Look, temporary timeouts I've been getting on CoinMarketCap. Let me, let me move over to the DeFi pulls. So you could see Yearn is number 10 now. Okay, their assets uh, locked up went up 45% in the past uh, day. So I, I see this one as a as a mover because I remember seeing Yearn like a you know way down here, you know, moved up, uh, you know, it was closer to Kyber or whatnot. So this was a you know strictly, you know, one of those I would call it even like a gamble really because I don't know much about it. I said, "You know what? I made some gains here with Compound. I made some, you know, gains. So let me go ahead and uh, since I made this is like a free gain in in, in a day, uh, let me take half of this and just throw it in urine and see what's going on. Um, I would assume that I'm down on that play because it's still down. I wonder how many uh, y, uh, urine got locked up in the yam fiasco. You could stake Wi-Fi. See, I don't even know. I haven't even looked at, into it that deep. That this this, and I'm being clear with this. I, I've been seeing it go up, and I'm like, look, I made some gains with Compound. I've been seeing this one. Let me just throw a little stab at it. But um, it's 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 you know it's. It's not a significant portion of my bag. You know, it's, it's more of a gamble than anything. You're right there, uh, Jigger Roams. He says, I'll switch to CoinGecko. Coin market has sucked since Binance bought it. You know, I've, I've seen what appears to be more development on coin market uh, cap size. Like they got headlines and they, they got like a, a chat box or whatnot. But uh, it seems like today they're running into a lot of uh, problems. Look at that. I'm refreshing no data to display. So you know what? Maybe let's check out Coin Gecko. I've been I checked it out the other day, and I've been noticing a lot more crypto maniacs using it. So boom. Now here's Coin Gecko. Level up says uh ETH transaction fees are crazy. Yeah, yeah. I mean, this is not the first time we've seen this. Um, that's part of the problem with ETH, guys. That the utilization capacity in, on ETH is is maxed out. That's why they're trying to upgrade the whole system to POS. But um, I'll refer to you guys to what Dan Larimer of EOS said: trying to change uh, Ether right now while it's functioning is like trying to change the engine in a moving car. It's it's a uh, uh, close to impossible. Yeah, the transaction fees are wild. Building this on ETH was a bad idea. Eh, it, I don't know. I don't know. It depends on what you're actually trying to do. Remember, guys, not all ideas are meant to just work the way that they're presented. Some ideas are just meant to capitalize on the gains and keep moving. You know, and sometimes companies buy companies to shut them down, not because they feel like they're they're an asset. They just want to shut them down. So sometimes like the idea is not what you think it is. For DeFi, I'm waiting until something is built and ran on Cardano. Realistically, that won't be here for a while. Yeah, with Cardano Slice, uh, my understanding is that it's just um, testnet and it's 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 functioning, but none of the smart contracts are available for you. Like you can't set up a smart contract. So um, to better explain that, it's it's not fully f functional yet. It's running and you know it's it's headed in the right direction. It's moving up. I, I don't have bad things to say about it, but it's just not ready to support that yet. But uh, I think that, you know, waiting for it, uh, you know, it's going to come around eventually. I, I do believe that Cardano will have DeFi platforms. I just know, uh, heard, read about uh, Justin Sun setting up some DeFi over there on Tron. Uh, there's one on EOS that I've talked about. I don't know if it's still functional, but I would uh, expect more DeFi outside of Ether. Um, also on Cosmos. I know there's one on uh, Cosmos. I don't know if it's, it's not, is it banned? There, I think it could be banned. Band protocol. There's so many guys that <laughs> I'm here every day and I still get confused.
ETH fees are cost prohibitive. I was going to make some small buys and pass on the gas fees. Yeah, I think maybe you could uh, work around those if you're just keeping your stuff on the exchange, you know. But again, I mean, that's that's not that's not recommended. So uh, Gogan's coming out soon. I didn't know that was the name of uh, the Cardano upgrade. Level up likes Tron. I mean, look, it's functional, and I've seen it used, and I've, I mean, I got, I, I got the Tron wallet right here on this browser. I mean, I use it also with DLive or whatnot, um, but one thing I noticed is that once it dropped out of the top 10, it never came back, but there's still stuff happening, so, um, you know, I'm using it every once in a while. I'm using it. ETH miners are the real winners? I'm, I guess so. I don't know. It depends on how much you spend on your mining equipment. You know, uh, mining was a lot more popular, uh, you know, years back. You know, but what, one thing I ask about, um, about mining, you know, and people that want to get into mining, um, the money that you're spending on the miner, okay, and setting up the mining or whatever, why not just buy the coin? Because you still got, you know, you're, you're, you're setting up the equipment and you're doing all this stuff. You still haven't gotten in a coin, so you're, you're down. And in the meantime, the coin may be appreciating. You know, so how long is it going to take you to make back what you spent on the equipment? In many cases, it's just easier to buy the coin out up front. Not in all cases, though. It's something to consider. It's something definitely I, I, uh, I went through uh, at one point. Mining profits up like 230 since DeFi started. Yeah, I mean, you could also say that, you know, the DeFi coins are up. So, like, you know, forget about even staking or, or, or doing lending or borrowing. Imagine just, you know, getting into these coins and just buying and selling them. And that's not to throw shade at miners because, you know, they are, you know, most of them, a lot of them are winning, but... Uh, mining equipment, here's the thing with mining equipment. It's like every other month, there's a new, better, stronger miner, you know? So here you go. You're ordering this this ant miner or something, and then like it takes a little bit of time for it to get to you, and you got to set it all up. And before you know it, a month later, there's a bigger and badder one. Uh, and, you know, Never was interim mining. I did the math, and it seems silly unless you have a bank to get yourself set up in the right winner. Yeah, I think it's with the mining. You're you're looking at it like an economies of scale. Unless you have like a lot, um, it's going to be hard to compete. Is my opinion. J Par J Par's doing GPU only. Okay, yeah. So you know you're mining the smaller coins, the Moneros and and others. But uh, you know you're, you're not mining ether with GPU. Now, that's that's basically where I came up with um, as far as mining. Because at one point I was like, let me just buy these miners. Let me let me get this mining popping. What about running a staking pool? Do miners do that also? Yeah, most people end up joining a staking pool, even when they're using GPUs or whatnot. There's a, they're st- set up online, and then you 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 connect to a staking pool and try to get you know the rewards like that. Because you know if if you're just one little guy, it's it's hard to verify blocks like that. It's just like you know you're competing against warehouses, you know. So, I mean, I've looked at it several times and the conclusion that I came up with, and I'm sure that there's instances that it's worth it, guys. Don't get me wrong. There's nothing, I'm not speaking in the absolute, but for me, I did the math and everything. I was like, you know what? I'm, instead of mining, spending $2,000 on a ETH miner or even on, or, or on a GPU or a thousand, I just get that and buy the coin. Grandin says, how you like Doge? Just curious. I don't like or dislike it. I, I really don't deal with Doge. Uh, you know, it's been around. It's, a, it's, it's one of the first ones, the first meme coin, but I, I really don't use it. I mean, I know that uh, Musk talked about it recently and it went up, but I, I really don't use it. I don't have anything bad to say about it. But yeah, that's my opinion with the miners. I mean, I could be wrong. I, I just feel like, it could be better just to buy the coin, you know?
Like, if you wanted to eat a banana, are you going to buy a farm and start planting bananas? You know, maybe more work. You, it's probably easier just to go to the store and buy the banana. You see what I'm saying? In the long run, you could probably produce the bananas for cheaper, but not in the short run. That's the thing, you know. You, you could say, oh, I'm going to buy this plot of land and start growing bananas. Uh, it'll be a while before you can compete with Chiquita. You know what I mean? Definitely not hating on my... No, absolutely not. I'm happy whenever anyone does well against the system as long as they do not do evil. Yeah, and I think with miners, like, uh, you know, uh, what, who was it? Par, or, I think it was Slice. Or no, Par says that he does GPU only. And yeah, with, with some of the GPU coins that you can mine, there's smaller coins, there's less competition. I mean, you can get into a, a baby coin and, and maybe one day it blows up and you got ahead of the, the, the game, you know? But to, to try to get into the game to mine like a blue chip, I, I don't think it's worth it. You know, I, you know, definitely, you know, maybe a baby coin that no one knows about and, and you started mining it on a GPU and while there was no competition, kind of like how people used to mine Bitcoin like 10 years ago when there was barely competition and you could still do it on your computer. Uh, but now it's, you know, you're going to need like ASICs, warehouses, you're going to need a lot of stuff. There's a couple channels there that cover just mining. Uh, one that comes to mind calls is called Vox, V-O-S-K, I think. There was this one guy that he would always set up different miners, and uh, he ended up setting up a shed in his backyard. He put the air conditioning, like just a shed, all for computers. And then he kept changing the coins that he was mining because, uh, you know, there's different. Yeah, Vosk, V-O-S-K. Yeah, that's the, that's the guy. Yeah, and I liked, I checked out his channel. I, recently, I haven't seen any of his videos, but yeah, you know, he seemed to be providing that content. Vosk Mining, yeah. Vosk Coin, that's his name. Yeah, yeah, I've checked out that, that channel. So, you know, um, I would say that's probably, that, 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 when it comes to mining, that's, that's a better source than Champ because I'm not a miner. You know, I, I would, you know, point my finger in his direction because he obviously has more experience mining than I do. I, I don't mine like him. I don't have a setup or anything like that. And, um, but yeah, he was doing GPUs and I think he had ASICs too. So I, I don't know. Now champagne's not your daddy. Be responsible for your own bag. That's right. That's right. I'm not anybody's crypto daddy out here. Voss coin. He's still doing his thing. There you go. Yeah. I, I, it's been a while since I've seen his channel, but, uh, I remember checking it out and, you know, thumbs up to him. Setting up an ETH2 validator doesn't seem worth it. Seems like it's going to be crowded and 32 ETH locked for like two years. Yeah, I've thought about that too, Ronnie. I've thought about that too. And I, I've said that um, from the beginning when I started reaccumulating ETH at 170 most recently, and I've talked about that here in the channel, I've always said that, you know, I was more inclined to sell the news if it ever happens uh, when it comes to Ether moving into POS2. I mean, our proof of stake or the Ether too. So basically, I'm, I'm, the rumor is, okay, the rumor is ETH is going to be a proof of stake coin. You're going to need 32 ETH to uh, stake. So I'm accumulating based on that rumor. Now, when the news hits that, or if it does hit, okay, because we don't know. It's just that this is if. If the news hits like, yes, ETH 2.0 is here. ETH is able to be staked. It works. Right now, they're in a transition period, okay? But when it's, if and when, it's activated. Uh, I may consider dumping. <laughs> yeah, I may. And then, and then waiting for the dip and buying back. It should be nice for the ETH price. So yeah, that's what I would think, Ronnie. So let's say if, you know, the news hits like, oh yeah, ETH is staking now. You need 32 ETH. You could start staking. I would assume the price would go up in the short term. And then at that point is when I would be inclined to, to uh, sell. You know, I would definitely consider it. Box Mining did a live stream talking about Yam, then six hours later at Exit Scam. So I don't even know about Yam. What is Yam? I, I have no idea. I know someone talked about that in relation to Yearn, but is Yearn funny too? Because, you know, I just picked up uh, Yearn yesterday on the dip and I just explained it right now. But uh, that's something I did on my own, uh, just purely speculation. I felt bad. Also had so which one is yam? Which one is that? I have no idea. I didn't catch that. 
Slice this potato coin scam. Who could have seen that coming? I, I don't even know which one you guys are talking. Which one is Yam? Let me know more. Let me know more, guys. What did I miss here? Oh, Yam is a whole coin. So I'm seeing Yam here. I've never heard of this. You guys are putting me on game here. I have no idea. Yam, rank 276. I don't know what this is. I have no idea. Yeah, I don't know about this one, guys. I have no idea. Is this in any way uh, related to YFI? Because I know someone dropped a comment. I don't think so. Uh, Jay Parr says this. I don't even know what this is, guys. Yeah, I've never even heard of it. This is the first time you guys told me anything about it. So, uh. And listen, that being said, you know, I'm not really into these like 200, 300, 400, you know, ranked 400 coins, guys. I'm, I'm more into the top 100. Kind of acts like ample fourth. Okay, all right, I see, I see. You know, I threw like 30 bucks on ample fourth and uh, I'm good. Yam is a DeFi coin that crashed yesterday once people found out it was unaudited. Okay, okay. Well, I'm not on that train, guys, so. And and uh, Yam is not YFI. They don't have from, they're, they're two different things. YAM and YFI is different. Uh, YFI, I, I, I did a little move on YFI yesterday. I told you guys I took some compound gains and, and threw a half of them into a YFI. Let's see how this runs. It's number 10 on the DeFi uh, list here on DeFi Pulse. And that's, let's, let's be clear. And I'm glad that everybody's talking about that. Um, all these little coins, even these DeFi, everything that is not Bitcoin or Ether, in my opinion, including Chainlink for that matter, they're all speculation. Now, some of them, uh, are a little bit more legitimate than others. Some have been around, but I'll tell you guys again, this is an unregulated space and there's all kinds of coins flying here or there. You don't know they're unaudited. So if you're into this space, don't be a complainer. Know what you're getting into, okay? Uh, there's going to be boomers. There's going to be doomers. This is not the traditional markets. You got how many uh, coins do we have here? Like th uh, almost 6,000 coins. And I'll say the majority of them are straight garbage bags, okay? So um, as a heads up, you guys, I think it's BTC, Ether, and everything else to me is up in the air. Okay, some are uh, appear stronger than others. Like obviously, Link appears stronger than uh, you know. I don't know. Something like Nest Protocol or something, but you know, I don't know. They said they found a bug officially. I don't see. I don't even know, Ronnie. I don't even know. But what I do know is that you need to tread lightly. Okay, and. Uh, that's the thing with people trying to make fast gains and, you know, the, the greed, you know, it, 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 I'm thinking of those that were holding chain link that they don't even know what it, do, it does. You know, if you don't even know what the coin does or anything like that, you're just in it for the gains. It's a red flag, man. That is a red flag. Now, at the same time, you can't be like com a, a complete square and, and be like, oh, well, I don't know because this, that, and the third. Like sometimes, like, look, for, for urine, I don't know. I, I really don't know. I didn't like completely vet it, but I was like, you know, I made some gains. I'm, I feel comfortable gambling. Sometimes you, you can gamble, you know, but, but again, that's basically what it is, guys. It's, it's not like a long-term move. Check out the stocks. S&P is uh, trading sideways. Dow is down slightly. You got crude oil down slightly. Let's look at the metals. They've been under pressure for the past couple of days, as expected. But um, I think this is a little pullback that we've been looking for on both the metals and the cryptos before they continue to go up. Gold is there at 1956. It cracked 2000 not too long ago, and I expect it to head back up. Silver, the same. It's at 26, and it's uh, getting close to 30. I think it will. Go, let's, silver is up 3% today. There you go. After having a little pullback. Uh, you got the 10-year yield doing very well this week. It's up 0.68 after touching down like a 0.50. 
I've seen a lot of movement. And then the cryptos are slightly in the red. So shout out to my silver heads. I'm going to check my watch list to see if there's anything that may be worth looking at. Kava is down. I've made some gains with Kava, I'll tell you that much. Comp is down too. I've made some gains with them. We have it in our portfolio. We'll pull up in just a moment. Ruger's down. Lend the Ave token, which have in our bag, is down. There's some stuff that's down. Look at Moderna. It's down after uh, it was announced that they're, they got to deal with the Vax. That's interesting. And then Tesla with the split. Tesla stock is going to split. Brandon says, I had the FOMO bad three years ago and learned my lesson. Yeah, yeah, don't let the FOMO hit you, guys. You got to know what you're looking for. You got to know the path that you want to get into uh, because if not, it's easily you're easily swayed. You can easily get FOMO'd in and more. DNT has been moving too, champ. I got in at 003. Which one's that? DNT. Never heard of that one. Is that Dentacoin? Oh, that's District OX. I've covered this one years ago, but I forgot about it. Hmm. District OX. I remember it being ranked a lot higher, though. Interesting. I'll keep this one in my in mind. Yeah, the FOMO's deathly. Yeah, guys, don't let the FOMO get the best of you, guys. That's how people get liquidated. That fear of missing out. And that's why I'm happy that I do my weekly credit spreads with the stock options or whatnot because I don't FOMO into any stock. The other day, someone was trying to send me, a, 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 I think it was yesterday, send me a whole Reddit post about how Rocket Mortgage is going to be a boomer with all the technicals. And it was like a long post. And he's like, what do you think, champ? Should we get into Rocket Mortgage? And this and that is probably going to go up. I'm like, I'm not interested in going long on these stocks. What I'm going long on is assets. I'm long on assets. Okay, that I can either, uh, you know, hold uh, as a crypto or in my hand or actually go to physically like a piece of property. You know, I continue with the, you know, getting some USD cash flow in, but uh, I'm, I'm not interested in holding rocket mortgage. Okay, the only stock I'm holding, like just holding there is Microsoft. And not because I expect it to make crazy gains, but because I think it's going to stick around, you know, as far as like holding value. Uh, I'm more along the lines of that company that's holding their value in BTC instead of cash. Let's be honest, 95% of the reasoning as to why DeFi is pumping is due to hype. All the other rational reasoning is another version of the same used car. Eh, Maybe, I don't say 95, Tyler, but you're, you're, you're right to a certain extent. But here's the thing. There is some value with the DeFi, and I'll tell you why. You can generate the DAI tokens, okay? You don't have to sell your crypto bag. So you're not uh, triggering a taxable event. You're actually getting a, a debt instead of income. And then you could stake the DAI, uh, which is one for one USD at a higher rate than almost any bank's paying. So you could get a 10%. On, on your die right now you can get a 10 percent return on your on on usd value so in a way there that that right there in my in my opinion is legit you know that you know there's some people or some exchanges that are using it to uh to leverage now is that the, the entire reason that it's pumping no and you're right but so uh, you know what i disagree with is not your comment it's just the 95 percent. i think it's more like uh you know maybe like 70 or 60 percent. but you're right there is a fomo uh a lot of it is hype i don't think uh, most of these tokens are gonna, are gonna survive and that being said uh when it comes to DeFi, uh i'm more interested in acquiring the tokens than i am to actually using the platforms and providing liquidity or borrowing and lending i don't want to lock up my coins you know i'll ride the waves up and down with the tokens and i want to stay liquid I agree with all of that, champ. Only thing is that the tech is not vetted enough, which could lead to bad results. Yeah, but that doesn't mean it's all, uh, it's Ill- illegitimate. You know what I mean? 
I guess what I'm trying to say, Tyler, is that I'm not as critical as maybe you are, but you got a point, though. And I agree. I agree. I think there's a lot of hype. I think there's overhype with DeFi, uh, and that's driving the price. But there is some value, though. There is some value with the DeFi. Think about it. You know, you could generate the, say, like, if you're a whale sitting on ETH, instead of selling it, you could get a loan on it, you know, the, through the DeFi platform, generate the die through Maker, and then lend the die back, and you can get around 10% APR. What bank could you get a 10% APR with? Or furthermore, you don't even need to generate the die. You could buy the die with cash and then save the die uh, for a 10% APR. Around, you know, you could shop what the, what, what the APRs are, you know, on these platforms, but it's somewhere around there. That's what they're paying for the die. But the value is beyond overvalued due to hype at this stage. Yeah, I think you, you're right, uh, Tyler, to a certain extent. But, you know, the value is what people are willing to pay for it, you know. And the price is the difference between the bid and the ask. And right now people are bidding higher and, you know, they're asking. Are staking rewards a taxable event when you get them? Slice is asking. I'm not the tax lawyer. I don't know the answer to that question, Slice. I don't know. I would say, you know, contact uh, the tax man because I, I, I don't know. Because the... Because the play, they play with the website and you can't in and, uh, get in and out of quick enough if they go down, fake shutdown. You're talking about some of these uh, exchanges. So yeah, let me be clear. Some, some, someone the other day is like, Champ, have you been using Uniswap? No, I've seen people use it and provide liquidity and, you know, and it, and it seems to be working all right. But um, I'm, not, I'm not really interested in locking up coins, guys. You know, I'm not, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'll, I'll hold the coin I'll, and, and flip it in and out it if it goes up, but you know, I'm not interested in locking up coins in somebody else's platform or even in a smart contract. Now, if it's within, like, if it's like a stakeable coin within the blockchain, I'm a little bit more up for it. Are staking rewards, no, uh, uh, in reference to how you explain DAI, no, Slice, DAI is not a stake reward. So uh, the way DAI works, and this is the heart of DeFi, and this is something that people should look more into. DAI tokens is a stable token. It's, it's on ERC-20. The way that DAI is made is you can't make a DAI token without providing collateral for it. So dies are actually backed by cryptos that are locked up in smart contracts. So you can go and lock up your ETH or any other ERC-20 token. And based on the current rate, you can get a loan in DAI. Okay, that's a loan. It's uh, my understanding. And again, don't quote me on this because I'm not a tax lawyer. Okay, but it's a loan. Loans are not taxable. Loans are a debt. You did, it's not, that's not an income. That's a loan. There's a difference. Like if you went and you 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 got a hundred thousand dollar loan, you're not getting chart, you're not getting a uh, tax that you you earned a thousand a hundred thousand dollars. In fact, okay, in fact, I believe the interest that you pay on a loan is tax deductible. I, and again, don't quote me on this. I'm not your crypto daddy. I'm not the tax attorney. Uh, go contact uh, an authority when it comes to that. I'm just giving what I believe could be true. So building on that slice, I, what I see is that some, what I assume is that some whales, instead of selling their crypto and, and being taxed on it, they're like, oh, I'll, I'll take a loan on my crypto. So let, let's forget, forget the example of crypto. Let's say you own property. You're sitting on this, uh, on a house. Instead of selling the house and getting taxed, you get a loan on the house. You don't get taxed on that loan. In fact, you can actually write off the interest that you're paying. So, um, DeFi and DAI, that, that's not staking. That's not staking. And going back, Tyler, uh, uh, to what you're saying, I, I think that the example I just gave shows that DeFi has some value. Okay, there is some value. I just explained it. You know, the DAI itself is actually backed by crypto. So, it, I mean... Yeah, there's a lot of hype and it may be overvalued, but I don't think it's, all, it's, it's worthless. There's something there. And that's, 
the reason why when I fi- found out about this and how this decentralized finance worked, I, uh, you know, this was over a year ago. I told everybody that my opinion was that it would be the hype. It would be the hype. It would be the driving force uh, other uh, after the Bitcoin having. This is what I said I, over a year ago. You guys run back the tape. You guys know. Um, and yeah, now it's hype. Now it's all hype. Uniswap has stole my fees multiple times and now and didn't do the swap. Has anyone had this issue? See, I can't, uh, I can't talk about that, Tyler, because I haven't actually used it. I haven't been the guy, you know, I, ha- I haven't, I've seen it. I've seen other people. I understand it, uh, uh, you know, pretty well, but I told you guys, I'm not really into locking up my tokens or whatnot. Me, Jon Snow, when it comes to taxes. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, like I, I'm when it comes to taxes, you know, that's that's a kind of a touchy subject and it's, there's a lot of legality around it. So, you know, I avoid that because I, I'm not I'm not the guy, you know what I mean? And I don't want to say the wrong thing. And I just don't know. You know what I'm saying? So I, I, I literally avoid dealing with that and leave that to uh, other people. But, you know, I give my opinions and things that I've heard. And uh, what I've heard is that, you know, loans are not taxable it makes sense right if you get someone loans you something and you put up a collateral you know like oh you know what's what's your collateral on my tv my shoes or my crypto or whatever you're not that's not generating income that's that's you're getting a loan you can use uniswap to convert between yeah i know that and i think i i don't know maybe i have in the past i don't know but um you're right. Yeah, you can. You, you don't have to use Uniswaps is a DEX, so you're not just using it to provide liquidity and locking up your tokens. It's a way to exchange tokens. You're right, Ronnie. Uh, what are you saying here? KC says, uh, if Panama didn't lock down so crazy during this pandemic, we were considering it because no income tax. Oh, OK. I don't know. I, I, have, I don't know what the situation is in Panama. KNC's moving. You know we got KNC in our baggie. Everything you can think about will be on the blockchain, just my opinion. Well, yeah, yeah. I don't know. I mean, like not everything, but you know, a lot of things are going in the block towards the blockchain, and uh, it's obvious that this is the direction things are headed at. To blockchain tech, it's not really decentralization. It's blockchain, and ultimately, what I think is that there's going to be a digital dollar. It's going to be blockchain based and it's going to be completely surveyed so that everything, every little move, everything you do is going to be uh, be surveillable, if that's even a word, under surveillance by the authorities. I pay my CPA good money to keep my stuff straight. Taxes are ridiculous, always changing. Yeah, they are. I think that, that that's one thing. They need to simplify this tax thing. They need to simplify it. But yeah, that's that that to me is the real value with the DeFi. It's like, you know, you can start getting loans without dealing with the direct entity. You know, that's a that's pretty that's a big deal. Now, is it overhyped? There's probably too many platforms. Absolutely, you know. Even crypto in itself, it's overhyped. You know, you got 6,000 coins. Do you really need 6,000 crypto coins, guys? No. Lady Plants says, write that stuff off, 126A. You see, I don't even know about all the, the laws and the legalities and all that. You know, I just have a, a general understanding. Bingo Champ, I used to be in the blockchain is freedom camp, but now I see different. No, no, blockchain is literally going to put people in the cell blocks and in chains. It's It's... Uh, there's a lot of proof in the actual wording there too. I mean, it could be used for freedom, but it's also could be used for uh, tyranny. But yeah, that's where things are headed, guys. Everything's going to be monitored on a surveillance system. He's telling me it looks like Joey has a shot, says Grandin. Oh, yeah, I talked about it yesterday, Grandin. I talked about it yesterday. Guys, don't sleep on Joey. Wall Street likes Joey, okay? Don't don't sleep on, on Joey. 
Wall Street likes him. He's more malleable. Harris and Joey are more malleable than Tani. And don't forget who's running the show, guys. It's the banks. They don't care about left or right. They just want more free money and more power. And to kill the middle class and small businesses. We have to have a game plan A and game plan B. Blockchain, neither word is quite friendly. Yeah, it's it's you know it's, it's hiding in plain sight, guys. And I'm telling you, like these main main crypto influencers, like the big big dogs. I don't know, guys. They're, I'm I'm calling them into question because if they these big dogs and you know these so called smart programmers and everything, if you didn't understand that there was no fungibility with Bitcoin. Then, I mean, how smart are you really? It took me a little bit to figure it out. And I'm not the brightest crayon compared to these programmers. And I figured it out. So I'm like, come on. And they're still pushing it like like if it was, you know, the savior. Guys, it's a surveillance system. There is no fungibility with BTC. Yeah, blockchain, ball and chain. Yeah, it's right in your face, guys. I subscribed to that guy yesterday. He shoots straight. Which guy? I don't know who you're talking about. Yeah, they usually tell us the truth and the words we are just used to not paying attention. Block or chain doesn't seem freeing. Right. You know, it's it's right there in your face. So much of this stuff is right in your face. But I mean, when you've lived a life, you know, watching Netflix, MTV, Viacom and and pornos, it's hard, you know, and I was one of those guys, too, you know. So many of us are raised on Viacom, Disney, and, uh, you know, on, in porn. Don't act like you weren't watching the porn scrambled up when you were a little kid. Okay? Get out of here, guys. It's a reason why it's free. All right, we've been on for over an hour. I'll take a couple more co- comments and questions, and I'm out of here, guys. Stay strong. I'm now checking out CoinGecko because CoinMarketCap was running slow. They got DeFi rankings here on CoinDeco? Let me see here. They got a, a little DeFi? All right. And they include Chainlink as a DeFi coin. And I guess it's because it's an oracle. But, you know, you can't take, like, you know, you, it's not like you go to Chainlink to take loans or, or provide liquidity. Oh, on YouTube from the link you dropped, what, you're talking about Manorino? Yeah, he's a straight shooter. Yeah, Manorino's a straight shooter. I'm telling you, Manorino's been on point. Follow his newsletter, and like this guy sends out plays every day. I haven't seen him lose a play. I'm I'm dead serious with this guy, and I don't even know who he is. Like, aren't they an easy way to visualize the tech? Like master and slave used in programming syntax, parent child ghost. I, yeah, I'm not a programmer, so I can't go down that route, Slice. I, I, you know, I'm not, I don't have enough knowledge when it comes to the programming and all that syntax to actually chime in, you know. All right, guys, I'm out of here. Check out uh, CoinGecko. Apparently, uh, you know, you can see some, some of the rankings here. But this is... They consider Chainlink a DeFi coin. I see why. I see why. There goes that Yearn. Let's see if I, I can make some gains on Yearn. I've been looking at Loop Ring and Ren as well as far as and also Band. All right, guys, I'm out of here. Thank you for the participation. I appreciate all you guys. Slice, Grand, and KC, and the rest of the boomers. Stay strong out there, guys. It's the voice of the blockchain. Sustoshi's biggest cousin, Crypto's finest champagne. Thank you for tuning in.